With Amex Platinum, you get priority notified with Global Dining Access by Resi, so you can get first dibs if a spot opens up at restaurants. And compliments to the chef turns into compliments to your Platinum card. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. What's new from Apple? There's the new iPhone 16 Pro, built for Apple intelligence. And it comes with the all-new camera control, giving you an easier way to quickly access your camera tools. The new Apple Watch Series 10 has our biggest display and our thinnest design ever. And this... It's the sound of active noise cancellation, now available on one of two new AirPods 4 models. So quiet. Check out all of the new products and new features at Apple.com. You can even buy yourself something new. See Apple.com for product availability updates. Apple Intelligence coming this fall. Hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of you relaxing. Because now you're managing diabetes with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. You get to know your glucose levels and where it's headed. Manage your diabetes with more confidence with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. Ready to learn more about the number one prescribed CGM in the U.S.? Visit FreestyleLibre.us to learn more. Based on retail sales data for patients last filled prescription by manufacturer. Refer to the Flair NL4 study published in BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care 2019. Safety info found at FreestyleLibre.us. How many chickens does it take to change a light bulb? I'm not sure. We'll have to wait until they get back from across the road. What's the difference between chickens and umpires? Chickens understand what bok means. Bok bok, bok bok. Why does a chicken coop only have two doors? Because if it had four, it would be a chicken sedan. What happened to the letter that fell off the billboard? Nothing. It's just a little dirt E. If you just read the bio for Dr. Steve, host of Weird Medicine on Sirius XM 103 and made popular by two really comedy shows, Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez, you would have thought that this guy was was a bit of, uh, you know, a, a clown. Why can't you give me the respect that I'm entitled to? I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola virus dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valve exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast it with the wave, an ultrasonic echographic and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent of Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease. So I'm paging Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve. It's weird medicine from the world famous Cardiff Electric Network Studios. The first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve with my little pal, Dr. Scott, the traditional Chinese medical provider who gives me street cred. The wacko alternative medicine assholes. Hello, Dr. Scott. Hey, Dr. Steve. And uh, we also have uh, Tacey's in here, too. What's up? Uh, <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Dr. Carey. Hello, Dr. Carey. Hello, Dr. Steve. And Amanda, we haven't come up with a radio name for you yet. I came up with some wildly inappropriate ones that went over like a lead balloon, but so until then, you're Amanda. Sounds good. I'm anxiously awaiting my name. Okay, very good. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we'll put that out to the listeners to come up with a name for you. Oh, dear. This is a show for people who would never listen to a medical show on the radio or the internet. And if you put out your email address... What you would get back is just a whole uh, inbox full of dick pics, so we won't be doing that. If you have a question, you're embarrassed to take your regular medical provider. If you can't find an answer anywhere else, give us a call at 347-766-4323. That's 347-POOHEAD. Follow us on Twitter at Weird Medicine or at DRScottWM. Visit our website at drsteve.com for podcasts, medical news, and stuff you can buy. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take everything here with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on this show. 
without talking it over with your doctor, nurse, practitioner, for the practical nurse, physician assistant, pharmacist, respiratory therapist, chiropractor, acupuncturist, yoga master, physical therapist, clinical laboratory scientist, registered dietitian, massage therapist, proctologist, oh, I have Zydeco musician, or whatever. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you'll know why in a minute. Um, check out stuff.drsteve.com for all of your shopping needs. You go there, scroll down, you see some cool stuff that we talk about on the show, or you can just click straight through to Amazon. It really does help us out a lot. So go to stuff.drsteve.com. Please check out Dr. Scott's website, simplyherbals.net. That's simply herbals.net. Hey, by any chance, have you talked to your um, the person that sold you the spray bottles about getting in, in version two of this new CBD laced thing of getting a more voluminous spray out of it? Is that some? I mean, because mm. this one's different than your last one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We talked about this a mm-hmm. couple times ago. I haven't, but, you, but that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty good idea. Well, it just. I can certainly look, yeah. What about that spelling error? Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and Carissa found a spe- spelling error on Scott's I'm on website. It. It, I'm on it. It's good for <laughs> Stas. I'm a I'm a, I, I, is, I'm a phonic. I'm a phonic. I'm a phonic speller. <laughs> I was gonna say that he he would say that's how they spell that's it in China. China. <laughs> that's right. That's how they spell Chinese. Cool. <laughs> Stress. That's right. That's a that's a old linger longer on that one. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and then check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash weirdmedicine. Dropping this uh, on the 29th, which is uh, on Friday, we're recording this on the 27th, uh, Jim Norton comes into the exam room. And the exam room, um, they get to, uh, uh, we have celebrities in, and they get to ask questions of us rather than us interviewing them. So it's kind of fun. And they get undivided attention. And we've got some super secret people that are going to be coming Ooh. later on. And uh, But anyway, check that out at patreon.com slash weirdmedicine. So um, how, uh, welcome. Um, Amanda, this is your first time on the show. Yeah. Although um, you and I do another show that can't be named. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's good to see you. So, uh, yeah, and you and Carissa are over there uh, having a drink. What are you drinking? Cheap wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yeah, Tacey gave it to him, so it's cheap wine. Anyway, all right. Well, um, I know, uh, Carissa, you brought a weird medical news, and this is not like Scorch's weird news. These are actual interesting um, medical topics. So what have you got? Fair. I also don't have something nearly as interesting as previously when I was here. That's hard to be topped. Um, but I do have just a weird piece of news that I wanted to share with you. Okay. And it's about a restaurant in Las Vegas. Okay. That's called the Heart Attack Grill. Okay. And their most recent thing is that they have displayed the cremains of one of their customers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Because their burgers... Killed them. Killed them. Oh. And they now are displaying their remains. Oh. Yeah. I've actually heard of that restaurant. Yes. I've wanted to go. I mean, their burgers are called like the the heart attack or the quad bypass or. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. What's the name and of this the place? Flatliner fries. <laughs> yes. Flatliner fries. Heart attack cafe, I believe. Oh my God. And uh, so, what's so bad about their burgers? Uh, they're I just mean, being hilarious. I don't think that there's anything necessarily <clears throat> bad about theirs. It's just. Yeah. Those ingredients are known to it cause. It says if people over 350 pounds eat free. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Oh, oh no. no. I'll have 10 of those. <laughs> Let me see. So, and. Oh, the, my God. Weigh yourself here. And the owner <laughs> wears like a doctor's jacket, like a lab coat. Oh, my God. Look at this thing. The octuple bypass burger. <laughs> it is stacked. It's got to be two and a half feet tall with. Uh, burgers, cheese, and bacon, yeah. and it's just layered. Yeah. Oh my! And then tons of onion. That's got to be a whole onion. I'm not doing that. Nope. No, not for me. So when I was just out there today looking <laughs> around, I just came across this, and I and thought it, it was hilarious. So. These people are hilarious. When you when you go into the men's bathroom, there is a urinal 
with Hillary's face on it, but there's also one with Trump's face on it. So it's, you know, if you're a leftist, <laughs> you can go piss on Trump. If you, you know, if you're right leaning, you go piss on Hillary. And, you know, <laughs> and they both look like they're enjoying it. <laughs> That's a whole nother concern. Yeah, triple oh triple bypass burger. And then if for another 275, you can add 15 bacon slices. Good <laughs> not. Oh, my God. So, yeah, apparently one of their customers had a massive heart attack after eating there. And the cremated remains are going to be publicly displayed but the owner's trying to swing it in a way of bringing awareness to how <laughs> bad that type of food is uh, okay that's that's like saying me <laughs> doing tippy tom's prostate exam was bringing awareness <laughs> to men's health i mean come on correct All right. okay let's see here uh oh my god wine is served in an iv drip bag hey yeah we're talking. and i'm pretty sure the waitresses wear nurse uniforms i yep. think they do and if you and don't finish your stuff. burger they'll spank you oh, oh stop nice. it i used to have to plan dinners <laughs> for our our groups when we would go to vegas yeah and i tried to get our groups to go there and no nobody really? would ever buy yeah, yeah i thought it would be fun well <laughs> those groups were stupid i remember when we we got a um a, <laughs> we were able to go on a trip to australia and these people that we went with they they actually went to the concierge at the sydney four seasons and said y'all got an outback because oh, we're in Australia, God's right? Sakes. Oh, my God. And the guy said, yeah, oh we got 4,000 miles of it. You're welcome to it. And then uh, we wanted to go. Where was it we went? Oh, okay. So can we tell this story now that you don't work there anymore? I mean, just say we had a lot of money okay, to spend. We had a lot of money that we could dinner. spend. And they, would, they said, don't spend X number of dollars per person per meal. And it was some insane amount of money. This was back in the, it know. would have provided for a great meal. Yeah, right. So I went to the concierge. I said, what's the most expensive restaurant in Sydney? And they came out with this thing. It was called Level 14, I think. And they, you could sit in the kitchen with the chef, and they would make you a 14-course meal with a wine pairing with each course. You know, a little bit. Not, you know, it would be hard to drink 14 things of wine. And, um, well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Forgot who I was talking to. But, um, and, and so it was like, we are going to this. We have to, because it was exact, it was kismet, because it was, the amount was exactly the number that they had given us per person. So we would have had to kick in the tip. But, you know, who cares? This would have been an amazing experience. And uh, we went to them, and they were like, no, we, we want to go get a steak. We want to go get a steak. So we ended up going to this steak place, which actually was kind of cool. Uh, you know, we had a view of the Sydney Opera House across the bay. We, you know, we were right there in the key. And so that was, it was okay. But, you know, they just, and the one, the one guy, okay, the one guy, uh, he just wanted a, ch a cheeseburger the whole time we were there. I just want a cheeseburger. I want a cheeseburger. So we, <laughs> we found, we got off the ferry from Taronga uh, Zoo. And uh, there was this burger plate. It had a big, giant picture of a burger there. And he goes up there and says, I want a burger with everything. Well, in Australia, that means something different than it does here. Because here it's like lettuce, tomato, pickles, mayonnaise, onions, you know, and ketchup and mustard. There it was, you know, a burger patty, cheese, Eggs. yes, uh, lettuce, tomato, a giant slice of beets. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and a fried egg and some other bullshit yeah. that was on there. And uh, it was like, dude, you asked for everything. Now you fucking eat the damn thing. <laughs> you know, here's your burger. It, welcome to Australia. God, that was such a great trip. And uh, anyway, <laughs> that's what happens when you, when you go with folks from the hauler, don't you know? But anyway. Isn't that where you're from? Mm-hmm. So they serve jello shots from a giant syringe at this place. And oh my God. Four and a half pound hamburgers, three tablespoons of lard, 20 <laughs> slices of bacon, eight slices of American cheese, 20 slices of caramelized onion, baked in lard, eight tomato <laughs> slices, one tablespoon of mayonnaise, only one, 
two tablespoons of ketchup and a tablespoon of mustard. Now, the mayo, I don't know why they've gone so short on that. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, no. I mean, it should be like a half of a thing of Hellman's mayonnaise or blue plate, which is the only good mayonnaise. No. Duke's. Yeah, okay. In the South. You'll get people to fight you for that one, but okay, I, I will concede that Duke's is pretty damn good. All right. Well, listen, in the waiting room, we have uh, our boss, Mr. Cardiff Electric, who I just I want to give a plug for. Um, he does kind of a surreal podcast um, called uh, the Cardiff Electric Podcast, but he interviewed our friend Eric Nagel recently, and it was great. It was one of the best things I've heard. And there is an Easter egg at the very end of that um podcast and i will uh send a mug to the first person who tweets to me what that easter egg uh signifies and that's all i'm going to say if you know it you'll 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 get it but anyway you got to tweet it to me at weird medicine all right very good and uh congratulations uh mr carter for uh, uh another great show and he has uh, call-ins from lots of people all over the country. There's Gary from San Diego. There's some guy named Cletus that calls in. I don't know. There's just all kinds of different things. So enjoy that, the Cardiff Electric Podcast. It's the, the most surreal thing in, in so many in-jokes. Most people just will go, what in the hell is this? But that's half the fun, you know. All right. What else have you got? That was good. Interesting. Um, yeah. So I was reading about this story of a 16-year-old boy who had premarital sex and felt mm. really bad about it. Uh-oh. And he was really stressed out from just life events. Yeah. Well, he went to bed that night, and he woke up in the middle of the night and couldn't move and was having a terrifying hallucination of a humanoid. Oh, so he was having a hypnopompic episode, yes. And... Um, his body was just frozen and he couldn't do anything and right. so i know you and i talked about this recently yeah um and then he went back to sleep the next night i don't remember something and he had like trained himself told himself ahead of time that he was going to get rid of this being that he was hallucinating by right saying jesus's name over and over okay. and he popped out of it Interesting. Yeah. I so know. any, so what he was having was a hypnopompic episode. Tacey had those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've talked about it on Patreon. We haven't talked about it so much here. Terrifying. Yeah. Do you, uh, you want to tell like, the story of what, what I mean, you heard? I've told my story of hypnopompic episodes before. And for those that don't know, these are episodes that occur as you're emerging from sleep rather than emerging into sleep. I'm, and it's also called sleep paralysis. Go ahead. I think it's been a while, but I think Chanda was on the show that we did. Okay. But um, I, mine was in a, a hotel that I used to spend two or three nights at a week. And I would have them, and somebody or something would lay down on top of me, not in a sexual way, and and I just couldn't move. Yeah. And then I would always hear them scurry away, and then I could get up. Yeah. Weird. And then we talked about it on the show. I gave Tacey a technique for breaking hypnopompic episodes. And just, I mean, it never happened again. She still was on the road, but it just never happened again. And I wondered if just giving her the power to do something made them stop. Because the person in that story, it doesn't matter really what you do. I mean, he invoked, you know, his religious figure um some of the any any gesture you can make to exert control over that hypnopompic episode will usually break it and uh mine was that i forced myself i was paralyzed but i was you're dreaming but you're paralyzed but you're also awake so there are you know all the visual and auditory things in your dream are still going on but you're conscious and you're like sitting there going i'm completely awake and all this crazy shit is going on and i can't move my body but you can harness the fact that you're sleeping and what i did to break these and it really never happened again after i did this was um willed myself to levitate i couldn't move 
I couldn't use my muscles, but I could will myself to levitate, just like you can in a dream sometimes. If you're you know, running away from something and then you, you do those weird jumps where they're way longer than they should be, and then sometimes you're flying, and then other times you're flying, and then you can't fly anymore, but you can do those sort of you know extended levitations, basically. And so I just willed myself to levitate right upright, and when I did that, I looked over to the left, and there was a hospital gurney in my bedroom, which, was, of course, was always the sort of um, archetype of the alien abduction thing. You know, they always take them on a gurney and take them somewhere. So, um, but as soon as I saw that, it surprised me, and I woke up just like that. And that was the last time it ever happened because I exerted some control over it. The person in that story did that. Tacey was going to exert control. And I think, you know, the, the thing just, whatever that switch is in the brain just went all oh, fuck it up. The ghost went away. Yeah. The, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. This place, place was haunted. Yep. <laughs> yep. Vagrants used to. Sh- you know, every there. time I tell my, ho- I do my hospice and palliative care lecture, I talk about you, Tace. Because one of the slides that I show is about that there's more deaths in the ICU than anywhere else in the hospital. And I stop. And I say, you know, my wife likes to watch these ghost shows. You ever watch those? You know, where they put a GoPro on their head and they turn off the yeah. lights and they scare themselves. And, and I said it, to Tacey one time, why are you watching this? She said, well, you know, in this hotel, three people died on the third floor. And now it's being visited by poltergeists. And I said, if that were true, every room in the ICU, you know, the pictures would be flying off the walls and you'd be hearing, get out, and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't happen. You just don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. another thing I came across today, though, is that one healthy thing you can do for the day is watch a horror movie. Really? Why yeah. is that healthy? Because it makes you burn calories. Oh, get your adrenaline up? Yeah. Mm. Unless you, well, yeah. Even if you laugh at it, it's probably good for you. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. okay. Instead of exercising. That so somebody did a actually. study on this. Uh, if it was NIH funded, I am going to be pissed. On horror films? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if the federal money was spent, what you know, looking at the caloric, uh, caloric rate of uh, people watching. There. Um, I mean, the basal metabolic rate of people watching horror films. There was a study done. Yeah. And I don't have it with me who okay. it was through, but it does have... A breakdown of certain <laughs> calories that, like Jaws, the average person burned 161 calories watching Jaws. How much do you burn when you're just sitting just there? Just sitting, probably about the same. I well, mean, well, okay, that would be something that's important. Were there other movies that burn more than that? Yeah, The Shining burned 184. <laughs> <laughs> Extra 20 calories. Coming how about, in at how about Debbie Does Dallas? <laughs> mm. Yeah. That might depend on what you're a couple extra calories. doing during that. Yeah. Movie. Right. It depends <laughs> if Tacey's home or not <laughs> when, <laughs> when I'm watching that. Because uh-huh. <laughs> if she isn't, there's other stuff that goes on. <laughs> yep. There you go. Yep. Honey, get out. Well, never mind. All right. You want to take some questions? Oh, wait. Yes, we have. Uh, oh, I made a mistake last time. It happens. And during our talk about whether DNA is transmitted to other people during transfusions, somewhere I said that um, apparently that WBCs don't have DNA, and I meant to say RBCs. So I have to thank our friend uh, Bob Thibodeau, and um, uh, he even has his own theme song because he, he sends me a lot of emails uh, about this kind of stuff. And it's, Everybody call me Grizzly, but my name is Bob. Bob. All right, that's it. All right. <laughs> all right, Bob. Thank you for that. Uh, all right. Um, did we do the one on the person that s- suffered a scary... Uh, sexually transmitted we did didn't we mm-hmm. where they uh the woman gave the guy fellatio but he had eaten peanuts and there was peanut oh. allergy yeah yeah, yeah yeah she was a only fans thing or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. um i did some research on that and there was some truth to this one and uh so that you know there there are some proteins that can be tr- transmitted sexually but mostly it's oral and this is people who have eaten peanuts and then they 
uh, you know, tongue somebody that has a peanut allergy because it doesn't take much. As you know, some of the people that have anaphylaxis to peanut protein uh, have, have a you know reaction with a very low exposure, and so. Hmm. Uh, I think that's where that came from. I don't think it was from the guy's splooge. I would like to see if we could detect those peanut proteins in semen. It would be a fun study to do. That's when I would support the NAIH, you know, funding. But anyway, just all right. Eat hmm. peanut butter and yeah. test yeah. yeah, just have them eat peanuts and then give them 24 hours, have them, you know, splooge into a cup, and then see if you can detect that particular protein and that wasn't there before. You know, mm-hmm. anyway. Would be interesting. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that's how we know things. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. <laughs> I have fully done things around the home that I think look good and then a bang in the night and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home and I can tell you, I know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals, to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Introducing our biggest GMC Acadia ever. Offering bigger screens, bigger views, and even bigger journeys. Live your biggest life in the all-new GMC Acadia. This episode is brought to you by Dove. You use all the right skincare products for your face, but your body has been missing out. With new Dove Serum Body Wash, you can give your body the vitamin C glow it's been wanting, the hydration boost it's been craving, and the active skincare ingredients it deserves. It's time for your body care era. New Dove Serum Body Wash. Get Dove or get FOMO. Pasajeros a bordo. Bienvenidos al Friskies Express. Por favor, mantengan sus patitas y colitas dentro del tren. A su derecha verán Crunch Canyon. A la izquierda, Philly Falls. Ahora pasamos al Pico Party Mix. Hoy el tour delicioso está por terminar, pero no hay problema, porque con Friskies siempre hay algo más para explorar. Vea Friskies.com para explorar más. Let's do, uh, you want to take some questions? Yeah, let's do it. One thing, don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. All right, thank you, Ronnie B. Hey, Dr. Steve, Matt in Charleston. Hey, Matt. Um, binaural beats, read an article on it about how it can do all kinds of stuff to your brain. And it's, uh, like one, one tone goes in one ear, another tone goes in the other. Yeah. And it adds up to some other tone being perceived by your brain. Right. Or something like that. Is this horseshit, or is there any real truth to this? Thank you. No, it's real in the sense that when you put two different competing tones, one in the right ear and one in the left, um, you it, you per, can perceive it as different things. And so uh, I know the Trip app uses binaural beats. There are other, it's called a digital drug, and people uh, can use binaural beats to attain different, you know, 
senses of consciousness and stuff. I'll play one for you if you want. Um, let me see if I can find a good binaural beat here. Yeah, here we go. Um, no Led Zeppelin song. That Black Dog. Really? Mm -hmm. That used binaural beats? I think so. So they have used binaural isochronic tone patterns between 12 and 20 hertz. This is the alpha beta range. Helps you increase concentration and vitality. Okay, so how would we know if this stuff actually did that? It's like, what very calming. Makes me want to sleep. Yeah. What kind of test would you do to see if this actually works the way that people are claiming that it does? Anybody? Um, ask him. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. I was enjoying my binaural. Oh, beats. is that what it was? Oh, I yeah. think we all were. Yeah. How about a double blind placebo? So how would you how would you structure it? Well, you know, you would first of all have a have a group of people that agreed to the testing. You'd have a group of people set up the test, and none of them would know what the other one was going to get. Yep. Um, and that'd be a good first start. And then, and then you, so you, could get, you, you could just you could check, check serum blood levels, ser serotonin levels, or or cortisol levels, or you can just have a questionnaire. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. Sure so you'd have to have yeah, an endpoint, a thousand different things. So yeah. what are you looking for? Because you know, with the Viagra initial Viagra study, their endpoint was um, blood pressure. Yeah. It wasn't giant meaty erections. I was thinking, I th for some other reason, I thought it was for hair uh, follicles. No, you're thinking of minoxidil. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blood so, pressure, blood pressure, right. right yeah, right. so it was blood pressure, and then people were reporting, God, I'm having these crazy erections. And then they had to do another study with the endpoint being erections. Right because on. you can't use a secondary, just an adverse effect, and then go to the FDA and say, oh, look, or, or you know, a side effect. But anyway, so how would, what were you going to say, Amanda? I was going to say, what about doing like an EEG or a CT while they're sure. listening? Sure, I like that. Functional MRIs. Yeah. So yeah, maybe what that would cool. show is changes in your EEG, which would mean it has some sort of physiologic effect. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of interested in the real world effects of this. So I'm not saying that's a, a, a bad study. That could be an intermediate study. But it, they're saying you're saying us like again. It's they're fun. saying it yeah, helps you much. increase <laughs> concentration <laughs> and vitality. So how do you measure that? You know that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So the way I would I would do it is to have music like this spa type music as the placebo, and then music that uses these isochronic tone patterns between 12 and 20 hertz included, and uh, have like the people do pre some and post performance. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it could be, you know, th there's ways that you can measure concentration. You know, the psych, the psych people have validated studies for that. And, uh, yeah, you would just, nobody would know, the person wouldn't know, the researcher wouldn't know, the computer would, would uh, choose them randomly. And then at the end of it, you unblind everything and see if there's a statistically significant difference. See, you're gonna <laughs> turn it down. We're, you're losing everybody. <laughs> so anyway, people drive and listen to this. <laughs> Do they? Does anybody yeah. I, really listen? No. Kim, Chick but, Kim I mean, Chickens is saying she she actually listens to this while she's studying for I, board exams. Yeah. pretty well. Yeah, that's a good idea. I well, used to listen to an instrumental song, the same one before every test in college. Oh yeah. Um, what what was, song was it? You would ask me that, and I should know because I took a lot of tests. Um, Pock Bell, maybe. <laughs> no, it was something really random for me. Mm. You say it best when you say nothing at all. Hmm. Instrumental. Oh, Alison Krauss. Alison Krauss. Oh, yeah. Oh, so and that's the real deal. That's the real deal. And I You're would listen to it on my way to taking my test, and it just calmed me down. It Do just you think put that's me in the sort mood. of like somebody that wears the same like a pitcher that wears the same set of underwear right. before they pitch. Uh, I don't yes. know. Yeah, it might be some of that. We've had yeah. that talk about me, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, yeah. My favorite underwear. Kind of just calm me down. Yeah. I wore the same underwear playing baseball all the way through high school and college. Wow. The last game I wore it up and threw it away. Did you wash them between I did games? wash them, yeah. Okay, good. It was pretty holy. I wound up having to wear extra <laughs> underwear <laughs> underneath the holy underwear. Anyway. But, but I felt much better about myself. So here's some people that did a study, 
on receptive music therapy with embedded 10 hertz binaural beats compared with standard care for patients with major depressive disorder. This was a randomized controlled trial. Excellent. The purpose of the study was to determine the effectiveness of music therapy with embedded 10 hertz binaural beats in combination with standard treatment in comparison. You know, they, the objective is exactly the same as the title. That's always a bad sign. But anyway, uh, so they did a randomized control s- trial um, enrolling as very small, 18 uh, major depressive disorder adult patients aged greater than 20 years old with mild to moderate levels of acute phase depression. The intervention group received, um, uh, okay, oh, music therapy along with standard treatment, while the control group received only standard treatment. This really isn't a placebo-controlled trial. They randomized them, but they all knew, hey, I got the music. The other people knew they didn't. So 10 hertz binaural beats were embedded into soothing music. These participants listened to it via stereo headphones, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so... The conclusion was the study concluded that major depressive uh, disorder patients who received 10 hertz binaural beats embedded uh, music therapy combined with standard treatment had experienced no significant differences compared with the control group. In terms of depression score, quality of life, or medication adherence. So there you go. So this, now that doesn't mean that it's all bullshit. It just means that 10 hertz binaural beats didn't work for this cohort you know so there may be other studies that they could do uh on these things just like you know if if they just quit with viagra and said well it's a shitty blood pressure medicine Mm -hmm. you know that would have been kind of crappy for all of us failures you know (laughs) all right I mean, it's crappy for the women, too. I guarantee <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> but we don't give a shit about you, do we, Dr. Steve? It's just all about us. Well, we do That's if right. you're just trying to jam, you know, a cooked uh, mm-hmm. spaghetti into a, mm-hmm. I don't know, <laughs> into something, something Next that subject. <laughs> would just yep. not accept let's, a let's go cooked on. piece no, of spaghetti on. anyway. Moving right along. All right. Yeah. Very good. All right. Let's try this one. This is a good one. Oops. Uh, Albuquerque again. How hey are man. you doing? Hey, good man. How are you? Great. Hey, listen, I uh, was just listening to one of your shows as I'm driving down the road and uh, talking about somebody with very high testosterone. Yes. And I had the same thing recently um, where I went in for a physical and just anecdotally said to my doctor, why don't we take a look at my testosterone? Okay. And he did a testosterone, uh, you know, test during my blood sample and... Uh, Mine was 1,100. So I ended up going to an endocrinologist to find out what the hell is going on with that. Yep. And and they said um, that they did another testosterone test where they didn't look at total testosterone. They looked at free testosterone and total testosterone separately. Oops. My free testosterone Give was in the normal the range. My total testosterone was very elevated, but so was my, I believe it was the serum globulin sex binding hormone. It's close. Sex that hormone just binding globulin. to be globulin. naturally high in me, which drives the total up, regardless of the free testosterone. Uh-oh. So the endocrinologist said, this is a non-issue. Uh, we don't factor for this. We don't look for this because it's not indicative of anything. But I don't know if that's the other dude's problem or not, but I figured I would mention yep. that because mine became very innocent. I asked my primary for testosterone. He did total. And what we really need to do is a breakdown of free versus total yes. and also look at that sex binding uh, hormone. So anyways, I hope that uh, might uh, have some relation there. Yes. Thank you. Have a great day. We so don't. Tasty, we said hi. Take care. <laughs> hey, Tacey. <laughs> hi. See, he remembered you. Um, <laughs> there, we don't talk about sex hormone binding globulin enough. And I, as I recall with that guy, we said, look, this could be lots of different things. You need to see an endocrinologist. And uh, because I didn't want to get too far into the weeds on this. But, you know, since he brought it up, um, sex hormone. Yes, you have total testosterone. And that is all the testosterone in your blood, you know, by concentration. But that includes testosterone that is bound up by protein. So some testosterone gets bound up in these globulins and you can't use it. And those we call those sex hormone binding globulins. Some of it also gets bound up in albumin. 
and that's also not free. So what you're interested in is, is the free testosterone. So if you've got somebody with 1,100 testosterone and they are not symptomatic of hypertestosteronism, then um, that they may they're probably okay. So you check their sex hormone binding globulin; it's elevated. Their free testosterone is normal. Then you know we don't have to necessarily just you know go crazy and do something about. It. But I I am concerned that they just kind of blew this off because if you have elevated sex hormone binding globulin, um, it can be a sign of liver disease. But the one that they might not catch if they don't test for it, is hyperthyroidism. Uh, uh, you know, there are other eating disorders, and it could have pituitary problems. There's all kinds of things that could cause elevated sex hormone binding globulin. So just going, well, that's just how you are. I'm, that's not thorough enough for me. Um, it, it's probably true. You know, if you're in Upper East Tennessee and you're standing in a field and you hear, you know, cloppity clop of, of hoof prints behind you you're going to assume it's a horse it's not you're not going to think it's a zebra but every once in a while it could be a damn zebra and that's why we always you know go the extra mile and try to try to dog things down i do just want to rule out some pituitary issues and hyperthyroidism i do some liver stuff i do an albumin i do some other things like that just to make absolutely sure but yeah when this comes up again we probably should talk about free versus total testosterone, but, um, you know, we, we just, it's a long, yeah, like I said, you can get into the weeds with this. So anyway, all right? All right. Thank you. I, I, I'm glad you brought it up because it, it is something interesting that we can talk yeah, about. Totally. Here's one for Dr. Scott and for... Hey, Whoa. Dr. Whoa. Steve, it's Whoa. Albert from Albuquerque. How are you Albert. doing? Hey, Albert, same guy. Great. Hey. Oh, Casey's doing good, too. Yep. Hey, I wanted to follow up Again. with you. Um, last time I gave you a call was pre my uh, prostate being removed. Okay. And um, post on the other side of the surgery now. Um, no real questions, but a comment around the recovery. Eh? The surgery itself was a Da Vinci method and uh, laparoscopic robotic uh, with a super pubic catheter installed instead of just a fully catheter post-surgery. We should probably things translate all those things. So he said he had a da Vinci, so that's robot, mm -hmm. basically. Robotic surgery. And then what did he say? He had a super pubic catheter? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is a catheter that they actually, um, rather than going up the urethral meatus, a.k.a. the cock hole. A.k.a. the worst idea in the mm, world. That's <laughs> awful. You will get in, you will hit somebody's car and then leave the scene yeah, of the crime <laughs> when that happens. I can speak with from experience on that one. Then the police show up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I looked. I got out and looked. But anyway, another that's another story for another time. Um so, so suprapubic catheter, rather than doing that, they go through the uh, basically the lower, way lower abdominal wall, just above that pubic bone in the front, and then go into the bladder that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can do the, the main reason to do that is it bypasses the prostate because if you pass a catheter up the old urethral meatus into the bladder, what's it got to go right through a is the dead center prostate. This prostate oh, that's just man. been operated on, and uh, that's Oof. really irritating. It's going to cause bleeding and clotting and stuff like that. So really, you're safer, you know, sticking up a, a trocar, which is just basically a big, sharp nail, through your... Um, um, you know, supra pubic abdominal, you know, pelvic it's wall. Kind of like tapping a maple tree for some exactly maple right. Very that's good. I'll, I'll give you that. That's give a good analogy. A yeah, and go. uh, it, that's actually safer than shoving a catheter up your cock holes. Well, and plus the the post um, surgical removal of that, mm. that thing. Oh, when it's socked in there with fire. all the blood and stuff. Yeah, it's good for you. Oh, all thanks. Right. For that's going good. Good the man. Issue I had was post operative ileus. I my GI tract just shut off and uh, spent an extra day or so in the hospital, got home, and uh, when I first night I got home, I was just violently sick at my stomach. I could not digest anything, nothing. So, um, yeah, postoperative ileus is a big deal. There's way more to his question. We'll let him finish it, but um, let's talk about that for a minute. We see that all the time. And... Uh, the, the osteopaths have a maneuver for that. Have you guys ever learned this? No. no. Okay. 
So what the osteopathic physicians will do is the patient's laying on their back. Let's talk about what post-operative ileus is. It's the, you know, the, the bowel doesn't like being messed with, and it doesn't like other parts being messed with either, and it'll just shut down. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the, the pain medication that we give will also contribute to that mm-hmm. because it will paralyze the bowel or at least make it lazy. Mm-hmm. So what they do is lay people, you know, they have the person on their back, and they'll, they'll slip their hands under their back until they get to the paraspinal muscles. And these are, you know, that's the back strap Mm -hmm. right right next to the spine. And then they will just put, they'll they'll make it kind of like a hook out of their fingers and put tension toward them and pull back on those. Mm -hmm. And I've watched them do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that'll, you know, you do that for a couple of minutes on both sides and Mm -hmm. sometimes that'll do it. They also recommend um, uh, chewing gum Mm -hmm. Chewing gum will sort of uh, get that gastrocolic reflex going because we have this reflex that when you're chewing stuff, your colon goes, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Here comes some food. Here comes some some vittles. Some vittles. (laughs) I'm going to turn it into fecal matter. That's what the (laughs) colon says. But anyway, so... um, So chewing gum is... And we have some medications for this, too. Mm -hmm. So... All right. But anyway, and it sucks when it happens. It would go down... And I ended up throwing up about two cups of just dark green bile, which I felt better after that. And then I hit myself with some laxatives the next day and cleared my bowels and felt amazingly better after that. Unfortunately, a couple days after that, I had a second bout of ileus. Mm. And I got ahead of it before it was terrible from a standpoint of uh, throwing up, but ended up with some uh, cramping and gastritis and some other issues with that. So... Uh, I'm wondering if there's any better way of preemptively getting ahead of the ileus. I know it happens frequently. Uh, I got up, I moved around, I did everything they said to do. Uh, but, man, it just was it was hell. Yep. Anyways, uh, good news on the follow-up of the pathology is the biopsy showed a Gleason score of, eight, of 7, which was actionable, and uh, we just made the decision to take the prostate out. Yep. Post-surgery, the more finite pathology showed a Gleason score of 8. Mm-hmm. There was a different so, type of cancer discovered, which was more aggressive. So they did the right it thing. It was also mm-hmm. protruding from the prostate. Ooh. They got the margins and the lymph nodes in the area all were negative. Okay, so good. Yeah. Hopefully, keep my fingers crossed. We got everything covered, and I'm done. I'll follow up with my surgeons afterwards. But your feedback on Ilias and maybe doing a little bit better. The hospital I went to, I loved. I loved the nurses. I sent them cookies and cupcakes afterwards. They were phenomenal, just lifesavers. Yeah, awesome. But, um, you know, could if we could have avoided that, yeah. step, it would have been a lot easier recovery. Well, sure. and, I, and I appreciate that. And it's just everybody's different. Mm-hmm. And some things that will prevent it for me won't prevent it for you they try to get people up you know we used to have people lay in bed for days after mm-hmm. surgery now they're just you know it's like get the fuck up yep. you know <laughs> get out of here we need a bed yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh god when i was training uh, if you had a c-section it was five days and if you had a vaginal delivery it was three days mm-hmm. and our second kid really i were we were you even in the hospital 24 hours I, I have no idea because we ended up back there so soon after yeah 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 I, I don't, Steve, I don't remember. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, it was pretty quick. Yeah. It was less than 24 hours with my second. Yeah. yeah. I've known people that came in at 6 in the morning and left at 4 in the afternoon mm-hmm. with their kid. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's not the first kid, I would assume. Right, 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 right. Third kid's probably a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, other other ideas for Elias? I mean. Yeah, you guys got anything? Yeah. We've got some stuff, too, so. You do? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you, sure okay, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that. we believe it or not, we put needles in those paraspinal muscles the same way and then and yep. a little bit of electrical stim. I'll do um, uh, small needles in the abdomen with electrical stim. Huh. Um, I'll do a little bit of cupping, moving cupping, where I'll actually put a, a little coconut cupping oil. Cupping their balls. I'll cup their balls. I'll put a little <laughs> cupping on the uh, on the abdominal wall. I'll put a little coconut oil on there and just do it, you know, kind of following the colon around. Okay. With a cup. And just to see if you can stimulate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it helps. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's proven, but my husband recently had surgery. Mm-hmm. And I, I massaged his stomach when he was oh, sure. just feeling. Yeah constipated afterwards I, so. i've done that as well where yeah. i start uh, in the cecum which is mm-hmm. the lower right, right and, just, and then work your way up 
mm-hmm. to where the liver is across the transverse process, which is across, you know, the under the the uh, rib cage and then down on the left side and just do that repeatedly. And sometimes yeah. that helps. I think I've done that to you, haven't I? You Jake? have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, and you can tell if you've done it enough, you can you can tell if there are some adhesions yeah. in the abdomen when we're you're, when you're running your, your fingers across yeah. and you can kind of feel if there's something you just need to kind of easily work through. And sometimes um, you can get you can get the balance to start moving pretty quickly. I have a weird sixth sense for putting my finger where things hurt, by the way. I just want to go throw yes. that out there. Yeah. I, I have patients come in and they say, well, I'm, you know, my shoulder's hurting or whatever. And, you know, where I work at it, you know, at a cancer center. And I can usually just take my finger and go, is it hurt right here? And they go, oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. where it is. Mm-hmm. And I don't know where that came from. And mm-hmm. it's not something that's like 35 year or 37 years now of doing it. Yeah. I, I've always had that, mm-hmm. you know. And some of it's just knowledge of anatomy. And a lot stuff. of it's knowledge of anatomy. And but I did knowing your people. But I, I swear, I think sometimes if you're really in tune, you do kind of just feel there's almost like a magnetic pull. Yes, yeah, that's what it is for me. Yeah. It, it's it's like a magnet that pulls my finger where it is. I did that on Carissa the other day. Yeah, I didn't even know my hip hurt <laughs> where you. Yeah, we didn't tell the story found. because you tell the story about how awesome I am. Oh, shit. Oh, here we okay. go. Like, yeah. Can we get some music? Oh, yeah, can, we get some, uh, can we get some music here? Oh. <laughs> um, well, my hip was in agony oh, in multiple go. spots, and um, mm-hmm. I feel like I kind of need to change my tune here. <laughs> and I went into the office and. Ooh. I laid down on the table. Oh, and, there we um, go. That's getting interesting. I had to pull my pants down. Ooh, that's the. I love the best. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyways, my hip was hurting terribly. And where it was hurting was not at all where his magical finger pointed right to. Mm-hmm. And when he did, I about came off the table mm-hmm. because it hurt so bad. And then. He put a needle in it, and it was better. Hey, there Yay. You go. Thank He's you. amazing. Yay. 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 <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Steve and the but Magic a, hey, Every blind needle. hog finds a, a corn. <laughs> but enough cage. about me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad you're feeling better. Yes, yeah. me I too. kid, thank I kid, you. but I'm just glad you feel better. <laughs> All right. So if you want somebody that's a professional needle sticker in her, you just call me. Out. Yes, okay, well, yes. I, I shot her up with no, Celestone and Marcane and Lidocaine. So. No, yeah. Dr. Steve has good What touch. do you shoot up with? Well, whatever is, whatever, <laughs> whatever I got available. <laughs> with astragalus, yeah, astragalus, astragalus. Some ginseng. Tried and you yeah. pawned me off on one of your minions. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. She was, she was good, though, wasn't she? Yeah, she was oh, great. Good. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that is right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway. Good. All right. Here now we're just telling stories that only we know what we're talking about. That's not boring. Great right. radio. Oh, All right. Again. So post op alias. <laughs> you know. There you go. Again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Hey, Doctor Steve. It's Jesus. Mike from New York calling. Hey, Mike. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, man. I have a question for you. You always hear about people with cancer. See, it's stage one through four. Yeah. And stage four is when it moves to another organ or another part of the body. Yeah. Is it possible to get two stage one cancers? Yes. Like have cancer in the lung and in the kidney? Yep. And they're not really related to each other? Absolutely. Or is that really uh, not something that happens? Thanks a lot. No, 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 no. Dude, yeah, that's a great question. It does happen. It's just called second primary. So people can have two different primaries. Some people are are uh, predisposed to cancer, and they'll get just as he said they could get prostate cancer and lung cancer, or you know a sarcoma and a you know and a carcinoma somewhere else. You know we've all seen cases like that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, absolutely, it can happen. It can happen at the same time, although that's unusual and that screws everybody up when it happens. Because they're also assuming that the first cancer they found was the primary, and then the second cancer that they see is a metastatic cancer. Yeah. But then they, you know, they biopsy that metastasis, quote unquote, and it turns out to be a completely different cancer. So that is unusual, but it happens. And then, um, yeah, and then sometimes it can be separated in time. So most of the time, that's what we see. But anyway, yeah, excellent question. I do want to do this one. This one is an interesting question. Hey, Dr. Steve. Hey, Dr. Hey there, Dr. Scott. It's Natalie from Northern Ontario, Canada, calling. How Hello, are Natalie. you? Good. We're good. How are you? 
Stacy. And if Stacy happens to be with you, oh. hi, Stacy. Hello. Glad you're part of the uh, show now and that you're enjoying your retirement. Yeah. And people remember me that you guys. Don't rub it in. Um, a news broadcast and ensuing articles that followed from um, Fox News uh, anchor. Oh, what's his name now? Tucker Carlson. I'm having a brain fart. Um, it's okay. We Tucker ha- Carlson. Yes. There you go. And it has to do with this bromial therapy uh, <laughs> where apparently you're shining uh reddish near infrared light at your nads and it's supposed to boost testosterone and make you manly if you ever had a chance to look at that video where you have these shirtless men doing things and the climax at the end of that uh, ad spot is somebody standing with the red light shining on his nads uh explain to me please how uh tanning your testicles would boost testosterone i think it's absolutely ridiculous i did a quick search on pubmed Found some reference to near infrared for cancer. Also believe in uh, also believe in the use of. Um, I'm sorry, there's somebody at my school door. <laughs> uh, okay. In the use of light for um, seasonal affective disorder, Northern Canada, along with yes, the that's all. Uh, so if mean. you can explain that, that would be awesome. Thanks. Have yep. a great day. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And well, that's um, a good question. Excellent. Is- yep. So, first thing, you can't tan your testicles with red light. <laughs> Ultraviolet light is what tans skin, Gosh. not near infrared. So, basic, infrared wavelengths basically is just heat, mm-hmm. right? That's so things, uh, black body uh, emitters, for those that remember their physics, uh, when they're emitting in the infrared, that's basically just the heat that's coming off. That's how we perceive that. We we can't see infrared. You'd have to have different kinds of receptors in the eye to be able to see it. But, you know, it's all along the spectrum. And, you know, visual light's just a very narrow spectrum in the, in, in the uh, electromagnetic, uh, uh, you know, sorry, it's a very narrow segment of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, you know, red light therapy has um, been shown to boost things like plant growth on the on the space station. Um, the, some studies have shown benefits with pain relief, but it's basically, you know, and when it's infrared, again, it, you're talking about heat. And, uh, you know, they did these light-emitting diodes that were implanted in these helmets, and Tacey and I bought this laser thing that you run through your hair. And actually, when you stimulate follicles with red light, they're supposed to grow uh, you know, grow more readily and stimulate growth in some of the follicles. And there are some decent data on this stuff. But, um, you know, I, I searched and searched and searched for infrared light um, on the scrotum uh, uh, boosting fertility and couldn't find a single thing. Mm-hmm. So I will keep looking, but it sounds kind of like malarkey to me. Well, the, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just saying the other thing is we know that heat can kill um, sperm, so that kind of almost sounds counterintuitive. Yeah, you to know what? Degree, to a certain degree. You're almost uh, a damn genius, Dr. Scott, because it's true the scrotum mm-hmm. is outside the for body a for a reason because yeah. for whatever reason, the gonads in the male cannot produce um, you know, um, sperm unless it's like three degrees below body temperature. Right. Why? Who knows? Who the hell knows? Yeah. It's a, ma- all mammals have you know these dangling sex things. of love, sex, <laughs> 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 or uh, yeah. So, I don't think ours dangle so much anymore. It's more like a no. They're mostly shriveled up and sag. no. It's yeah. just uh, <laughs> it was it Anthony Cumia or one of, uh, one of those guys said it's like. Uh, salt water taffy plastered to your thighs <laughs> oh. that's what our scrotums are like at our age pretty much <laughs> oh. tacy was much that was very uh, I, she's very uh, attracted to me right now mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm not saying i'm opposed to tanning my testicles but, but you, you can't so tan with infrared light know, that's I the know, first I thing know, but they talk about that oh, tan, you know test you're tanning the jungle region yeah so I will uh, continue to research this, see if I can find anything. But Dr. Scott's right. Mm-hmm. If you are using infrared light and heating up your testicles, you're actually going to pr- decrease um, spermatogenesis. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what it does to testosterone 
Yeah, go ahead. And and as far as the far infrared lights, we do use that a lot in therapies for people with of diabetic course. neuropathies and you know chemotherapy induced neuropathies. So, I mean, yep. it, it certainly does have its place. Absolutely, but, yeah, there, but there's a whole clinic that does nothing yeah. but laser therapy for people with neuropathy, and I'd say about fifty percent of the people that go swear that it helps them. Oh, so. shoot you. Yeah. And yeah. a quick search that I just did mm-hmm. shows promising results for incre- increasing testosterone levels. But from what? Infrared or near infrared No, I know, therapy. but promising from what? What results are they talking about? I'm not through it all, but it also goes through the next sentence to talk about how the light therapy device that delivers optimal power without producing heat. Yeah, so, okay. Okay, so. well, okay, if it's, oh, that's that's great. But <laughs> if, the, if it's correct. infrared light, it's heat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anyway, I looked and um, on PubMed and found absolutely nothing. This is what I searched, near infrared and testosterone levels. There's three papers and none of them are related to this. So I don't see a decent study that talks about this. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, somebody was saying, well, they use UV light. And it's like, no, nah, I know that's not right. Mm-hmm. And if UV light doesn't penetrate the skin, you know, that that's the whole point of sunburn. It, yeah. It's it absorbed by it, the yeah. skin. <clears throat> and if you hold up like a scrotum, all you're going to see is red light through it. Like if you stretch it out enough to look through a scrotum, it'll just, all you'll see is red light. The, only the longer wavelengths can uh, get through there. So anyway, all right, very good. Well, that was interesting, but I will continue to look into that. If we find something fascinating, we'll uh, bring it to you. Um, don't forget to check out Dr. Scott's website at simplyherbals.net, simplyherbals.net. And uh, we can't forget Rob Sprantz, Bob Kelly, Greg Hughes, Anthony Cumia, Jim Norton, Travis Teft, that Gould girl, Lewis Johnson, Paul of Charsky, Chowdy 1008, Howdy Goo Plunk, Eric Nagel, the Port Charlotte Whore, the Saratoga Skank, the Florida Floozy, the St. Pete Bark Keep Blower, the Tampa Dolly Museum Diddler, Percy Dumb, Roland Campos, Sister of Chris, Sam Roberts, She Who Owns Pigs and Snakes, Pat Duffy, Dennis Falcone, Matt Kleinschmidt, Dale Dudley, Holly from the Gulf, Christopher Watkins, Double Steve Tucci, The Great, Rob Bartlett, Vicks Nether Fluids, Cardiff Electric, Casey's Wet T-Shirt, Carl's Deviated Septum, Producer Chris, Jenny Jingles, The Inimitable, Vincent Paulino, everybody, Eric Zane, Bernie and Sid, Martha from Arkansas's daughter, Ron Bennington, and of course our dear departed friends, Gvac and Fez Watley, who's support of this uh, show never went unappreciated. Listen to our Sirius XM show on the Faction Talk channel. Sirius XM channel 103, Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, on demand at other times at Jim McClure's pleasure. Many thanks to our listeners whose voicemail and topic ideas make this job very easy. Go to our website at drsteve.com for schedules and podcasts and other crap. Until next time, check your stupid nuts for lumps, quit smoking, get off your asses, get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, Goodbye, everybody. Everyone. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs>